my bedroom. We are finally starting our bedroom makeover. We have lived in this house for like two and a half years about. This summer will be three years and we really haven't done much to this room. We've done like little bitty things. We've definitely made it functional, but we really haven't spent time styling it just because we've been busy doing the entire rest of the house aside from our laundry room. We're still going to work on that. So whenever I have a project and I start working on it fairly quickly after deciding that we're going to start working on it, I feel like it just flows so much better. But when I have a project like my room, but we don't jump into doing it right away, like we're focused on other things, it just gives my mind time to think and think and overthink. And so it just kind of creates like a jumble in my mind and then I start to feel stuck. And that's where I've felt for the past couple months in our bedroom. So I'm just gonna jump into it today. We're just gonna start. Now, when we got this bed a few years ago, I loved it so much. It was actually probably like five or six years ago that we got this bed, but it's very farmhouse style, which I used to totally love farmhouse style. It was my style, I loved it. Ever since moving into this house, we've slowly phased out of farmhouse, but I love the bed. It's very comfy, it's very sturdy, very well made. And so I've just been kind of racking my brain on how we can transform it. So that's what we're gonna start working on today is shifting our bed from farmhouse style to not farmhouse style. And then once we get that kind of sorted, then we'll start to build out. I'm not entirely sure how far we'll get in this video, just because I think this is going to be a bigger process, but it'll be so worth it. So enough chit chat, let's jump into it. I wanna hear you say it. All right, you guys, this is our bedroom as it is today. And as you can see, we've definitely added a lot of function into this space. It's absolutely a functional bedroom, but like I said, it's just stuck kind of in that farmhouse era. And also I feel like it's not completely cohesive all around. Like we have some more traditional items, a few modern pieces, definitely some rustic pieces and farmhouse items. And I just want to make the space feel really cohesive. So in today's video, we are just mostly going to be focusing on the actual bed frame itself changing out our rug and kind of the bed area, I guess. However, in future bedroom makeover videos that we're going to be sharing over the next several weeks and months, we are going to be really tackling basically every other aspect of this room. I want to paint our walls. I'm actually wanting to extend our curtains just to kind of give a little bit more emphasis over there. We are wanting to add some DIY custom wood shelving along with painting the dresser and changing out the hardware and either changing out our nightstands for something a little different or adjusting the style of those as well by painting and changing out the hardware on those. I just don't really want this to feel like a matchy-matchy bedroom set, which it is, but I love the quality of pieces that we have. I just don't love the finishes on them anymore. Then I also want to do a whole big thing on this back wall. I'm not entirely sure what we're wanting to do yet, but I want to do some kind of feature wall or some woodwork or something. And then there's gonna be a lot of little tweaks here and there along the way. So we really wanna change this room from top to bottom and I just cannot wait but I really feel like the bed is kind of the place to start and we'll build the room out from there. So if you are not already subscribed to my channel, make sure that you hit subscribe so you don't miss out on this whole renovation. And once we're done with this room, we're going to be heading into our laundry room finally and getting that space completely transformed. Wake up at mine. <laughs> He doesn't even care. He's just saying. <laughs> this other shoe I couldn't find oh, forever. Yeah. Good thing I didn't declutter that one. Yeah. Good <laughs> some stuff. Some socks. Some Tums. <laughs> that makes sense. Actually, it's not as bad as you would think. Yeah, it's not too bad. This is like the cat's hideaway under this bed. Focus my attention on you. 
Okay, so the plan is basically this whole bar actually has studs kind of like going through it, but these pieces are just like twisted on. We'll just take all of it off. So we'll have to unscrew from the back. Kyle will unbolt these from the front and then definitely he'll have to wood fill and sand these holes. And we'll try to wood fill and sand these holes in here. But if we can't, then we'll have to get a board or something and attach it from the back and kind of fill that in that way. So we'll just kind of see how it goes. I've got this feeling in my chest that thump a thump thumping. Won't you to gimme, 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 don't stop. When he pulled these off, we were like, we didn't realize that these pieces weren't attached, but actually this piece of metal kind of looks cool in here and that would save a ton. So you just take these out, that whole metal bar comes off, you can paint it, and we'll just bolt it back on. Yeah, so we'll definitely need to That'd take it cool. off just so that we can get in yeah, all the nooks and here. crannies in there. I fill these in. Yeah. But yeah, we'll paint the wood to be more modern and then that bar does not look farmhouse at all. Worst case, if it doesn't work, you just fill it in, sand it, paint it. Yep. Like we were gonna do. Awesome. They say love like this comes once in a lifetime. It's funny, whenever you do these DIY projects, like you kind of just don't know what to expect. I mean, we kind of had the same idea, I guess, in mind on this, but we were thinking it was going to be a lot more work because we thought we were going to have to take that bar off completely, thinking that it was all kind of one piece. But you really just cannot see into the future on DIY projects. So definitely keeping an open mind on them and kind of rolling with the punches sometimes good like in this case and sometimes things kind of throw you for a loop the other way but keeping an open mind during DIY projects can absolutely make or break them So this little tool is like his multi-tool and it has a grinder attachment so all the holes had a metal insert and some of them were sticking out so they weren't flush. So he just grinded that little bit down on a couple of them that were sticking out. And then he was able to sand it flat, which prepped it perfectly to get filled with the wood filler. And with that, all you have to do is squeeze it in, make sure it's kind of flush, let that dry, then go ahead and sand it. And then typically you will want to do this a second time just to make sure that you have it completely flush. We are on day two. Yesterday was going so well. <laughs> and then I made a silly little community post here on YouTube and said, today is going so well. This is so awesome. And then the wood filler took so many hours to dry. And here we are today, finally ready to paint just because we didn't want to rush the process. Like we didn't, it definitely wasn't worth it to rush it and then have the bed not look as good as it could. So it's fine. It's fine. But today I'm going to go ahead and really quickly vacuum off any of the extra dust on the bed, give it a good wipe down, and then we are going to start painting. So let's do this. So first things first, I needed to vacuum off all of the dust and dirt that was kind of sitting inside of the bed frame and then also, you know, kind of along all the ridges where we had sanded the previous day. And then after that, I went through with my e cloth with just water, which is perfect because I didn't want to leave any excess cleaner or anything on there. So using an e cloth with just water is always my favorite way to clean furniture before a makeover. Feet, casual mess 
paint that we are using today comment below if you can guess what paint in the world we would be using today of course you guessed it it is beyond paint they are amazing i have used this paint so many places all of our bathrooms our built-in desk upstairs in the loft area my desk we have used it on our bar stools in our kitchen We've used it on furniture pieces. I even used it on all the kitchen cabinets in an apartment up in Montana. This stuff is incredible. And today we are using the color Pebble. I love this stuff because you don't have to strip your paint. You don't have to sand anything down. It has such great coverage. You need three coats and that's it. It's incredible. So the first thing I do wanna say, this is very, very thick paint. That means it's gonna have incredible coverage and you're not gonna have to use as many coats as you would if it was a thinner paint. Also, you are going to first want to just dab your brush in the paint and like stipple it into any corners or crevices that your roller can't get into. And then you are going to roll everything else. You want to roll as much as you can. That's gonna give it the best coat and like the best texture at the end. But once you're done, it just looks incredible. The first coat's definitely gonna be a little bit splotchy. The second coat looks really nice. And I like to do a third coat just to give a little bit of extra added durability. It's like really simple and pretty foolproof. So let's go ahead and get this bed painted. This is going to completely transform this bed because of course we already took off the hardware, that barn door style hardware that really made it look farmhouse. But the other aspect of this that really is making it full farmhouse is actually the finish. It's kind of like that rustic weathered kind of worn down wood look. And it's also a little bit whitewashed in there. So that is really what's making this totally look farmhouse. But this color is so pretty. It's really cool. It's kind of like a gray, kind of like tan color. So if you have a lot of cool tones, a lot of gray tones, it's going to pull more gray. And if you have a lot of warmer tones, it's gonna look more tan color. So I really love this color. I'll show you what it looks like. So pretty immediately, I feel like you can see such a difference in the style of this bed. Obviously, it still is a wood bed. It still has the same shape and the same structure and all of that. But truly changing up the color and the texture just makes such a huge difference. I have said this so many times and I'll say it again, but paint is going to be your best friend when it comes to budget-friendly DIYs in your home. You can completely transform a piece of furniture, a room, even a decor item with a little bit of paint. You can use spray paint, beyond paint, you can use lime wash. Like there are so many different painting techniques that you can use in all different areas of your home and it's going to make such a huge difference and it's usually not a ton for a gallon of paint. It'll go a long way and even when you get into the more specialty paints, they're still going to be usually under a hundred dollars a gallon, which when you're considering doing DIYs and totally transforming your space that really just gives you so much bang for your buck.
It's so funny, as I continued on painting the bed and I was able to kind of see the new paint next to our existing furniture with the old finish and everything, it was amazing how big of a difference it made. And it's just making me so excited to continue on this bedroom transformation. A lot of times in our makeovers, which we have shared so many home makeovers on my channel, I would say most of the time we try to do an entire room makeover in one video. However, this time it was just so much that we wanted to get done and everything was just kind of a little bit on the time consuming side. And so we're just taking this kind of one step at a time and we're breaking this up into multiple videos. But I'm really happy that we're actually doing it this way. That way I can really put a lot of focus on each individual area and not feel rushed and be able to make great decisions on, you know, what's going to go with what and make sure that everything is very cohesive and flows really nicely. Because in the end, I feel like bedrooms are one of the best places to really put a lot of focus in because that's the space that is supposed to be very relaxing to you. That's kind of just like your safe space and if you can make it really relaxing and peaceful and an extension of you and your style, it's just going to make you that much happier to be in that space. We did this for my boys about a year ago. I actually shared a full makeover video with all three of those bedrooms in there just a few months ago and whenever we did those bedroom makeovers for my boys, it was awesome because we were really able to customize it and just make it feel very special to them and so I'm really excited after doing so many makeovers in our house that we're finally focusing on this room and the bed is just the first little step of that but I have so many ideas and so many plans and I've been loving hearing all of your guys's ideas whether it's in the comments or you're messaging me over on Instagram it's just been so cool to hear all of your ideas but I also want to hear what do you guys think about this color if you're not new here I'm sure you already are very familiar with this color but what do you think about it for a bed I feel like it's so cool because it just looks kind of traditional, but it also kind of brings it up and makes it feel a little modern. And I feel like that's kind of where my design style has started to lead is like that modern traditional style. I don't know, maybe it's called transitional, but I'm just loving the color. All right, so the first coat is done. It's a little splotchy, but honestly, because the bed is kind of textured. It actually went on really, really nice. So I'm gonna just go ahead and start on the second coat. You can kind of see up here, especially where it's not as textured, kind of how that first coat typically turns out. But the second coat always just looks so, so, so good. So let's put it on. the second coat on and I actually slipped on the third coat. I did not film that because the third coat and every coat after basically looks the exact same as the second coat. You're just kind of adding durability. So I'm going to let this dry for a little bit. I guess we'll start figuring out exactly what we want to do with these, the rods that are going to go across back onto the bed. I don't know. I'm kind of wondering if I should do like a gold or a black but I haven't decided yet. Don't want to feel when I watch it back. Kaleidoscope to another end. The triangle's enough to make me sick. to feel 
and we ended up going with gold. I talked to Kyle about the different options and he was kind of into the gold too. So we'll definitely be adding like different gold accents throughout the room, just like I've kind of been doing around the house. I wasn't super thrilled with the two gold options that I kind of liked. I'm not sure how they'll look, so I'm gonna take this outside and hopefully it's what I'm thinking it is. It actually is saying that it's like a champagne bronze which I wanted more of like a vintage gold, but the other one that they had was one that I used in a different area of the house and I actually, it wasn't like my absolute favorite. So anyway, we're gonna give this one a whirl, see how it goes. I'm definitely gonna spray paint this outside though, but I did take a second and just wipe these down. <laughs> Benji, actually that's probably Felix trying to get inside. Anyway, I'm gonna take these outside and get them spray painted and then I'll probably just let them sit overnight. That way they can like really, really cure hard. And then tomorrow we will to reassemble the bed, put everything back together. I have a new rug. I've actually had it for months and I've been waiting to do this. So we'll put the new rug out. And then we're also going to be building a DIY bed bench to go in front of the bed for now. So we have a lot of stuff to get done tomorrow, but let's go paint these. I really toyed with the idea of doing black or doing gold. The reason that I initially thought about doing black is really just because we have black accents throughout our whole home. And I think that black is very timeless. It's always in style. And I do feel like gold is a little bit more on the trendy side right now. And so with that being said, I have been pretty selective on where I've chosen to add gold accents. For example, whenever we've done our bathroom makeovers, I have opted for black light fixtures and black faucets. We also did the same thing in our kitchen. And that's because because those are going to be harder to change out in the future if you know gold kind of goes its own way however I will say I do think gold is also kind of timeless it's just a little bit more like look at me notice me and so you really want to make sure that you kind of will love it not only now but even when it's not quite as trendy so anyway I wanted to say all that but with that being said the reason we went with gold is honestly I do just love gold at least at this point in time and this is something that's going to be very simple and very affordable to change out later on if we want to and I also really just love the warmth that gold can bring to a space so those are the reasons that we decided to go for gold and by the way I absolutely love this color it turned out so pretty it's definitely like a vintage gold that I was going for very rich very beautiful and I plan to kind of sprinkle little gold touches throughout the room just to make things once again feel very cohesive Alrighty, we are on day three. We have a little bit to do today, but honestly, this is gonna be, I feel like the easiest day, knock on wood, I probably should not have said that, but really our focus is going to just be putting the bed back together. So we're going to attach those gold bars that we spray painted last night, put the actual mattress and everything back on. I did get a new rug. I got this actually months and months and months ago because I thought we were gonna be tackling this room a little bit sooner, but here we are. And it's just been kind of waiting and hanging out. So we have that actually laid out in the living room right now, trying to kind of flatten out. But then the other thing that I want to focus on, actually that's the thing that we're going to start with today is building a little bed bench. Now I did find a perfect one on Facebook Marketplace, but the guy isn't gonna be back in town for like a month. So I'm gonna wait to get that one from him. But until then, I just want something kind of temporary, but I'm also going to be able to use this bed bench in a different room once we're done in here. So it's going to be kind of like a temporary one for now, but it's gonna be really cool and it'll be a really a fun DIY. It's very, very affordable, like under $20, you can make this yourself and you can really customize it, whatever stain you like, how rustic you want it, even just what size you want it, like how long and everything. So let's go ahead and head out front. Kyle and I just got back from grabbing the wood. He's in the garage grabbing out his saw so we can start cutting things down and we will start working on the bed bench. 
So to make the DIY bench, you are just going to need a two by two and a two by eight. You can also use a two by six, but I personally like the thickness or the width of a two by eight. It just makes it feel a little bit more substantial. And then if you want, you can go ahead and stain it or paint it, but it comes together really, really quickly. Here we're just cutting our desired height, which we really liked the height of 19 inches for the legs. Plus it'll be just slightly taller because of the actual bench seat itself. And then once we had the legs cut down to 19 inches, he then cut the top and bottom at a 15 degree angle. That way the legs would kind of pop out a bit and be able to sit flush against the seat and the floor and they wouldn't just be, you know, plain old straight legs, which is totally fine, but we just wanted to add a little bit of extra interest this way. We decided to make our bench about 65 inches long. We just kind of like that look and we also thought that would be a good size that we could use other places in the house once we get that Facebook Marketplace bench that I'm really excited to pick up later on. But once you get your two by eight bench seat cut, you can either leave it as it is or you can do what I'm doing, which is just taking a few minutes to distress the edges. I'm using a hammer, a crowbar and a screwdriver. So nothing really fancy. I didn't do anything to the top because I actually didn't want it to feel really rustic but I wanted it to feel more vintage, if that makes sense. I know those two can sound pretty similar, but to me, I feel like there's definitely a difference. Now to sand as usual, I'm just starting out with a really low grit sandpaper, like a 60. That way I can get all of those distressing marks really smooth. And then I finish off my sanding with a high grit sandpaper, like 220, and that just makes it super soft to the touch. This is a new pocket hole kit that I just got and I've been really happy with it so far. Point of the pocket holes is it makes a drill cavity here and then you can put a screw in there and it's all hidden and it goes straight into the bottom of the board. So I made this super easy. You take your wood, put a little gauge on it, see how that goes down to one and a half inches. Move your drill bit down to one and a half inches and then here's your little gauge. It has uh, notches on the top. You move this to one and a half inches. You just put it down on the piece of wood like that. Center it as best you can. Grab a little clamp and that's it. Now you drill a hole and you're done. Alright, the bench is like almost done actually, <laughs> even though it doesn't quite look like it. We have like all the not even hard stuff, just like the tedious stuff of like measuring, cutting, all that. But before we actually assemble the bench, I do want to stain it just because it's gonna be a lot easier to stain individual pieces of wood as opposed to if it's all put together and you have to get in all the nooks and crannies of it. So first I'm going to put a pre-stain wood conditioner on. It just helps stain not look splotchy or anything on raw wood. And then I'm going to use actually Early American just because this is what I have right now. 
Um, and this is also what we've used on the DIY shelves, like the really pretty chunky shelves that we have in the bathrooms upstairs. And then I'm thinking I might put a little whitewash pickling over the top but we'll kind of just play it by ear and see. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go through and just like, kind of like a little utility line, stain things one by one, and then let them dry and start staining the next once it's dry. But these are really fast drying stains, so hopefully it won't take too long. Darling, all I really know is that I've been for all, all in for you. Now the reason that I decided to pickle the top of the bench is actually because the two by eight that we had picked had a little bit of a red tone in it. And so I just kind of wanted to do this to tone it down a little bit and make the top match the legs a little bit better. And it actually worked pretty well. So with the pickling, what you wanna do is just paint it on, let it sit for a few minutes, and then go ahead and wipe it away. And you can really kind of play with it until you get your desired look. All right, the bench is all done and stained and it's all dry. So now we're really just ready to actually attach the legs. Okay, so we have all of our parts cut. What we did is we have these two legs that we cut at an angle like this. We wanted an inch and a quarter in between them. So we cut this little block at an inch and a quarter, mark the center line here so we know exactly where it's lined up. Put this one right here line up our marks and that's ready to go in and why are you putting wood glue as opposed to just well screws? you can do just the screws but then they can get a little wobbly it's just a lot more solid joint if you put wood glue on it you don't need a bunch that should be plenty but that'll help with the adhesion here and then we have this center brace too which we have two pocket holes in and that'll go towards the center of the bench so you won't be able to see it. That'll drop in right there. So on the like inside that. you can see that, but on the outside of the bench you won't be able to see the pocket holes at all. You're a rebel, getting into trouble. You are kind of like a fire, like a fire, like a fire. Unpredictable, so original. You are never backing down, backing down, backing down. That's what I like about you. This was incredible to me that we were able to make this bench for under $20 and actually we ended up having enough that we would be able to make a second bench if we want. I'm not sure if we're going to go ahead and do that because I don't know that we have a need for that, but this project was just so incredibly inexpensive. When I did pull out the little metal pieces that we painted gold i just felt like they were looking a little splotchy or something so i went ahead and put on another light coat of gold spray paint on them and i think that's gonna kind of take care of that it was hard to know like i was like no i think it looks good and i was like i don't know maybe it's splotchy and then we brought it out and i was like I think it's a little splotchy so we decided to just play it safe it's never going to be easier to spray paint them than it is before we put them back on the bed. So we're gonna go ahead and just pull up all of the canvas drop cloths, and then we'll also get our old rug pulled out of here so that when we're ready, we can bring the new rug in. All right, 
I don't know about you guys, but under our furniture, it is full of dust and dog hair and cat hair and all this stuff, just kind of in the areas where a vacuum can't get under all the time. So while we had everything pulled out, I just took a few minutes to vacuum and mop the floors. So this little tool right here is super cool. I know this is a makeover video and you're not here for cleaning, but this is amazing. It's one of those wet dry vacuums. So you can go ahead and vacuum your floors as well as mopping them at the same time. And this specific model is really cool. I feel like it's really high quality. It works super well. It's very lightweight, but I found that it goes on sale for about half the price as a lot of the other models. So I will link this one down below if you've been wanting one of these, but you don't want to shell out quite so much money. Now I it's calling me Think of all the wonders you will see When you dare to dream I'm blessed to have this life I'm given And from this moment I am living This world So before bringing the rug into the bedroom, I wanted to give it just a little extra time to kind of fluff up the fibers. It was very overcast and rainy this entire week, and so we weren't able to use the sun to our advantage, but pulling out my vacuum definitely helped kind of fluff up all those fibers. Once we had the rug in and I got the bed all made, the final touch was just to add in that DIY bench. And you guys will have to let me know what you think about this bench. Is this something that you guys are thinking that you might like to try in your house? I think it's really cool just because it is such an affordable and simple DIY. You could actually use this in your bathroom, in a hallway, kind of wherever. All right, you guys, that is everything for episode one in our bedroom makeover series. I cannot wait for what's to come. I have a whole list on my phone of all the things that I want to do to this room. I think next we're going to be painting in here, adding in some really pretty DIY shelving in the bedroom, and maybe I'll even do something with the nightstands in episode two, but we definitely have a lot that I wanna get done in here. Please, please, please let me know what you think of everything, how you think the bed frame flip went, and 
continue giving me all your design ideas and all your thoughts on everything so that we can really make sure that this bedroom is everything that we want it to be. It's really nice to have that outside view and kind of get things put in your mind that maybe you wouldn't have realized before. So I really appreciate all your comments down below. As always, thank you so much for being here. And if you are not all caught up on our many, many home makeovers, I'm going to leave this playlist right here. You can click on it and kind of scroll around and see which ones you haven't seen yet. But there's going to be a lot of different design ideas, lots of different design styles, and tons of budget-friendly DIYs that we'll share in all of those. So definitely check that out next, and I will see you in my next video. Bye, guys.